something that is very important, firstly, for the democracy of this country, but secondly, for the communities where the community media is to get the much needed COVID-19 related information. So we then said that we will give each of the entities of the 231 that qualified 45,000 because for content generation in terms of car hire, refueling, we gave the money for the PPEs, we gave the money for telecommunications, and that was the kind of package. The PPEs were mainly to ensure that as the journalists and the volunteers and the staff in the community media sector do their work, are protected uh, and reduce the, the risk of, in, in, of, of, of catching the COVID-19 uh, virus. And, and secondly, to ensure that there was still a voice uh, for the communities from the communities, by the communities during the lockdown. I know that it's small interventions that we've made, uh, colleagues. They, they, on the 25th of May, we then launched the second phase, another uh, 10 million. And in this, in this phase, which is still under disbursement, and Ananias and colleagues are still under disbursement for the reasons that Nick mentioned, that, that, that whilst we were not, as, uh, not strict with the first uh, phase, the second phase required additional information like three months back statements and, and other information. And so there's a lot of back and forth with the entities that have applied but not sub submitted sufficient information. So we've only just dispersed 5 million, I think, as of today. And we still have got another 5 million to go. So we're urging people to please either submit uh, applications that are required or apply if you did not hear that we, are, we, 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 we had a second phase. We have also gone to the board colleagues and asked the board for a third phase, 10 million. And that third phase, unfortunately, we're trying to reprioritize 10 million from broadcasters and for pu publishers or print, we will look for money from the savings. But beyond this colleagues, we have, in terms of making sure that the survival in the sector as well, we've seen Minister Mtembo on many community radio stations across the country cascading the message on COVID-19 to communities directly. The other thing that we've done uh, as, the, as, the, as the MDDA is to cascade the content. So if we had adverts from GCIS or Department of Health and posters, we then sent them to the databases that we have, including working with the with the with the with the uh, uh, sector bodies that that we work with in the medium term, I would like to announce that next week, between the 13th and the 14th, because of the just uh, 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 recalling uh, caring challenges in the sector, which make the sector not to be sustainable, we will have a community media consultative conference on sustainability on the 13th until the 14th of, of August, uh, colleagues have been invited or are being invited. At that conference, uh, it's a consultative conference for the reasons that we would like to have consulted in uh, terms of reference for sustainability research, so that at the end of the day, after the research, we begin to build a sustainability model, which will then categorize uh, the sector in terms of their sustainability uh, abilities. So if there's entities that need annual support from the MTTA, the research must tell us where those are and what they need exactly and tell us all the categories. So if I use the robot analogy, we'll work with the red uh, uh, category and we will know that those are in the best trade because either they, they, they can't generate any revenue and for the reasons, again, that Nick has mentioned that the, 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 the government has spent with GCIS or to be to be coordinating is poorly coordinated. And to be fair to GCIS colleagues, this has not been made a law. It's not a policy, it's voluntary. And so there's still a lot of work that must be done by government. We will have Minister Mtembu at the consultative conference giving a keynote, and we will put him on the, on the, on the spot to say the government must actually make good to its promise of the 30% set aside. So those are all the things that we're working with in the long term to ensure that there is sustainability on the sector. We had a meeting with the sector bodies last week, and I was encouraged to hear that some were saying, you know, we don't take pride on handouts. We would like to be self-sustainable. 
So we're beginning to, as the MGDA to say, once we have established the community media sector, we are aware of its challenges. We would like to actually work with the sector to ensure that there's sustainability at the end of the day. So that needs a lot of resources, a lot of thinking, but we will do it through the research. And, and I think those are just the things that uh, uh, we're doing. During the COVID-19, also, we have disbursed 18 million to, to Centec. We also make uh, calls uh, for people that owe Centec to come to us and we clear the debt. We will again issue another call in September, October, and we will also issue a call for normal grants around September. So please, colleagues, make sure that you go visit our websites for all this information. We are, we are available to talk to you. Thank you. Thank you. Hear me, guys. You know, you know. Oh, thanks. Thanks, Zogiso. Um, colleagues, let me remind you other aspects, or you can just send questions via our chat room, and you can just ask any speaker anything and we'll read them to the speakers so that they can avoid uh, too much traffic. And another thing, those who are watching us live, uh, you can send it to bojanalpressclub at gmail.com. Send your questions there, bojanalpressclub at gmail.com, then read them to, to, to the guys. And let me go to our social commentator, Mr. Lorato. Lorato, you hear about the state of Virginia, you heard about uh, compliance, and you just heard about time. You make this, and so tell us what you think about it of our community. Thank you so much, Ananias and colleagues. So w w one of the, the observations really, Ananias, and again, I have the advantage of uh, as a running a, a PR and comms agency and, and working with clients who sometimes have budgets to disperse or at least to use on uh, marketing and comms campaigns, we help advise them on what uh, some of the some of the platforms they should invest in, right? Or at least uh, put the money in. And and one of the, the biggest challenges that I've that I've uh, at least that I've observed and I've seen it with my colleagues as well in the industry is an issue around perception, right? So so the community media is not always perceived as the shiniest thing. And I, I use an example with, uh, I know that we are focusing on, or at least you convene this from a Northwest perspective, but, but I want to use an example of uh, Josie FM is uh, bigger than Power FM, right? Power FM, which is a commercial radio station, Josie FM is even bigger than SAFM from a listenership point of view. And, and at times when uh, our clients would be targeting people in and around uh, Jobek South and would then propose Josie FM as a channel, they almost sneer at it. And, 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 and when we probe further to want to understand, but are you not looking for ears uh, and, and, and people or customers to or people to to uh, relay the message to, then they would say no, 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 no. We would rather use a Power FM, although it is half the number of listeners of Josie FM. And and you realize that it's really more around perception. So they don't see Josie FM uh, as as almost call it as prestigious versus uh, a Power FM. Uh, and 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 that's more from the client side, right? Of course, then there's the other element that are really around. Uh, call it how also SMMEs in particular have been uh, viewing uh, community media, right? And, and again, talking to, to, to perceptions. So when, when you put together client campaigns and you try and say, listen, as an SMME, the most important thing is that because you are hyper-local, so think about somebody who's selling bricks, and you say to them that uh, the biggest thing that you almost want to do is to there's a target market in, for instance, if it was uh, in and around uh, Pukeng, Huase, and you say to somebody, use the local community radio stations here because they are hyper-local. The likelihood of them preferring a UFM is going to be a lot higher. So, so the, 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 there's some uh, attachment to bigger brands, commercial brands have a better appeal. 
and uh, clients uh, lose there, I actually want to connect to a, a, an audience member. Of course, uh, the other challenge is that then you have issues such as, for instance, just last week or uh, 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 about two weeks ago, right? The ICASA had to issue a statement because uh, an, an, an NRCF member was on a radio pro, on a TV program and he said something, and ICASA had to rebut that, right? Which almost, uh, or at least the, the, the claim was around. And Paseka may correct, may correct me if I'm if if I'm I'm, I'm not uh, relaying the, the 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 facts correctly. But it was really around uh, issue of license fees, you know, a claim that you know ICASA is is muzzling them from the money and all of that. And it just seemed to be a misunderstanding issue, right? So so if you are an outsider looking uh, into all of these things, you are likely to say, so one, community radio stations are always closing because of uh, bad governance, poor management, uh, them not paying license fees, and, 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 and. So when you look at a litany of all these things, they then add to this poor perception that is there, right? The, the third thing, Ananias, again, that also contributes to the perception management. And, 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 and it's not the fault specifically of uh, uh, community media uh, platforms, right? And I say not their fault per se, because uh, if you look at some of the mainstream uh, platforms, they run effective marketing campaigns, right? And these are campaigns that really talk to the concerns of one, their clientele, but sometimes, and in, in most cases, the concerns of the people in the area where they are at, right? So, so you can imagine if you are in, in where I live in, in, in Kempton Park, the, the nearest uh, township here is, is Tembisa. And ordinarily, a, 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 Tembisa, a Tembisa FM would from time to time run campaigns on, call it safety, because GBV has been one of the issues that they are dealing with in Tembisa, at least if you look at it, if you look at the, the crime stats and all of that. So if you run such effective campaigns, the likelihood is that you are then going to be perceived differently because then it means that your social capital uh, increases a little bit. You, the, peop, the community associates a lot better with the station. You are not just a conveyor of information. And then lastly, uh, Ananias, which really uh, has been more around opportunities. So I've spoken about the challenges, right? The, the, the opportunities has been uh, digital readiness, right? And, and in all honesty, uh, if you look around, at least I've, I've just browsed around just over 200 community radio stations uh, uh, in, in, the, in the country. A lot of them are not, don't have live streaming service, right? So if you look at the upsurge of uh, many people who are now listening to radio, not only from the AFM uh, or at least their, their, their radios or because they are driving to and from work. People are now listening to radio on different devices, right? And, and, and the biggest question has been, so if you are a, a Mafisa FM and you have not captured or you are a Valta uh, in Tau and you have only now been on analog, you have not been digital ready, there is a biggest miss, uh, missed opportunity. And again, of course, it comes with resources, uh, it comes with, uh, you know, skilling of people to make sure that when there's that kind of capability, somebody is able to manage to make sure that, uh, you, you know, it is always uh, up online because the biggest challenge with saying that you are digital ready and then you are not, uh, you can, there can be a backlash uh, on social media. So, so th th that has been the, the biggest thing. And I'm hoping that uh, we can, in this conversation, have a, 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 con a conversation around how do we do we with all these activities, including fundraising, including the relief uh, uh, monies that are coming coming from the MDDAs and the likes, how do we then focus a lot more on the digital readiness? Because currently, there are many people who are tuning into this, this broadcast, not because they had it on some radio platform, but because they were tuned on social media. Then social media was used as a, call it an advertising platform to hook those people so that they can say, this is a topic I'm interested in, and then tune in and participate.
Rato. And without any waste of time, let me jump to uh, uh, our next speaker and his business. Uh, Mr. Tsepang Rapego, you are in business and you talk with this, this book. Uh, local business is keen to invest or advertise their businesses, their products. Yes, there is. 
Yes, there is a list. Uh, we will also put it on our website. Uh, but if I get, I can send the list now to Ananias' email. Uh, we do have the list, yes. All right. Okay. Um, I think another another question is also directed to you. Is from Lerato Tukubela, who says, mine is a compliment to MDBA. I would like to thank them for... For the emergency fund savings and turnaround time that is for um, for print to assist us to continue publishing as we mainly source revenue from advertising. Uh, there, there was a part where we lost you. The the actual question I hear the compliment. The actual question is. I think I think I, I, it was I didn't hear that. No, you know, the, pro the problem is that there's a there's feedback coming from your side as well. That's why we can hear you clearly. Uh, Paseka, did you um, hear the oh, question? Because your line is clear. I'm trying to as well. Can, can someone else give me the question if they heard it? Because uh, other lines are clear. Paseka, did you hear the question? No, I didn't, I didn't hear most of it. Can I suggest I no, it, it's, it's, it's not a question. We can tell yeah, you. Sorry. sorry, I did read the question. Um, I think it's relating to the amount that was issued, which was 45,000 Rand. And the second one was 20,000 Rand. Now, the, the person that posed the question is asking whether or not it could be more. And I think specifically around about 35,000 Rand. So that's the question. I, I think if I, if I relate it correctly, please do correct me if I'm wrong. Okay. So let me, let me explain the amounts. So in the first phase, it was a 50 50 split. Uh, 45,000 to uh, uh, broadcasters and 45,000 package to the publishers. However, in the next round, because we got, we took money from the broadcast funders and we looked for money for, for, the, for the print sector, we could not give them the same package. So we're giving 50,000 to the broadcasters currently for rental or, or, or bond repayments that are, are, are in areas as a result of the pandemic. And we're giving 20,000 package to the publishers because we could only get about 2.5 million from savings. That will be the case when we go to the third phase. It will, again, we're looking for another 2.5 million or 3 million for the publishers. And we are negotiating with the board to reprioritize at 10 million from a 40,4 million current budget, 2021 budget of the broadcasters. If the board agrees, we will then use a 10 million and bigger packages again for broadcasters. Unfortunately, colleagues from print, because we're not getting any support externally for print, we use money that we have internally, and it is very little. If I must tell you, we've got about 2.5 2 million, up to 3 million every year for the entire publishing sector. Unfortunately, we can't increase it. I got a, a representation, I think, a submission, a proposal uh, from the Western Cape two days ago asking for the same thing. We, we unfortunately do not have that kind of money. And this is despite the fact that we've gone and met with Media24 three times, with Kexton three times, India in independent media and so forth, because they are also in, in financial constraints and they are closing some of their uh, uh, divisions and papers. They are unable to provide financial support to the community media sector. However, they've agreed to support to support us non-financially. Thanks. Oh, okay. Thanks for for, for 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 the question and the compliment and thanks Suzuki for uh, clarifying that. 
And let's go to 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 Pan. Sapang is from Bits. Uh, Mr. Ramosapele, I, I hope you can hear me and you can just jump in and tell us how business fit local media. Can they invest or advertise or partner with local media? How do they treat local media from the business side? So I will go and ask for relief, ask for donations, ask for, but we know we have our currency, you know, we've got our currency, that's a time, but our currency, that's our papers online and other things. But do help businesses take local media serious? Saban, are you with us? Yeah, no, I'm back, uh, Anias. Can you hear me? Yes, you can continue. Fantastic. <clears throat> Look, I think, um, and, and thanks for this initiative, um, Ananias, I think it's a great, it's a great one. Um, you know, before I go ahead, let me also say that the, the chamber and uh, of wants to say that we are with the people of Zimbabwe uh, as they go through uh, what they are going through. So our hearts are with them. Now, coming back to the topic, I think Lerato has touched on some very important aspect of perception when it comes to. Uh, buying at space in, in, in the community. But the perception does not only apply to um, at space uh, buyers. I mean, even in government, if Nick is to send a set of questions to the office of the Premier or the MEC, chances are they will not even attempt to answer him. Um, but if somebody from Sowetan or City Press said the same set of questions to the same office, they will reply within 24 hours. So the perception extends way beyond just the business uh, community. It's, it's across. Again, if um, a young person, uh, a potentially uh, singer, brings his music to Nick and Nick plays it on his radio, the response of the same community will be different if they hear the same music at Metro FM or uh, Radio 2000 or YFM. So that perception extends way beyond um, just the, the community that, that also the, the business groups. But here's the thing for me, uh, Alan, I, I think the, the community media, you guys have not really taken advantage of your numbers. You are not leveraging on your numbers because at this time, you shouldn't be relying on an ad agency in Kaute to do advertising for you. At this point, you should have a Northwest based um, at agency. And in fact, the community radio stations could come together and say, we are going to form that agency that we will benefit from. So you go to advertisers uh, with one voice, you know, and you say to them collectively as 10 or 15 community radio stations in the Northwest, we, we have this much listenership. And, and, and when you start talking that kind of language, most advertisers will then start to listen to you because now um, you are not going there as an individual saying you have 20,000 listeners or 30,000 or so. But if you say you have half a million or up to a million, or whatever the number can be, it's better than 10 or 20,000 uh, 20, that you could present to a potential advertiser. So, so I think from a business point of view, Community radio stations, in particular, need to start approaching uh, or, or approaching or having this approach, this one approach, uh, when you go to advertisers, um, so that you all benefit at the end of the day. Now, secondly, I don't see any reason why, and and this is an issue that Lerato also raised. I don't see why at this point. The community radio stations don't have 
one website where they can stream through that one website. And look, you can get companies like Vodacom, MTN to say, look, um, this is how much it's going to cost us to host 10, 15 community radio stations and help them to stream live through this one platform. And, and in return, we will then give you advertising on that same website. So, so you, you not only increasing your, your listenership, but you are building your brand as different stations. So any person uh, from Morocco, America, Cape Town, for example, they are then able to tune in to say, hey, what is happening at home? Um, similarly, they could be in Limpopo and so forth and so forth. So, so you need to look at that as community radio station. You say, how can we leverage on our number? And you can still use that same platform to attract advertising, which you can say. But also use that same platform to share news. You know, and, and, and Lerato said this, that, um, you know, the digital platform uh, is been more and more uh, being recognized and, and, and people prefer it because now people listen to radio on their phones and on the go and so forth and so forth. So, so, so for us, uh, as the chamber, we think that you definitely need to start considering using your numbers. Stop relying on people from Jobek to, to help you raise funds and build your uh, your companies and and and, and, uh, and raise profits from, from that. Thank okay. you. Okay. Thanks, Mr. Tsapani. That was helpful. And because of time, we'll be I'll be rushing things a bit. And uh, uh, Lorato, let me get to you. Let's talk about print. Let's talk about print. Talk more about community relations. I would have said from your point of view, tell us more about print, the survival of newspapers in the country. In the Northwest, we may are not rich at the moment, may who can pray, me, may those like your media 24, they are closing magazines, major magazines are closing down. So, Lorato, just six through the survival of print media. So, so Ananias, one of the, the most interesting things has been uh, the, 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 the trends, right? And, and if you we look at, for instance, the consumption of uh, media, particularly in urban areas, uh, you, you know, typical like uh, Brastenburg, the city, uh, or at least the, the town itself, but then you then go to a peri urban, which could be a little bit of booking, and then if you say extend to the very rural areas, right? Ordinarily, the the further away you move from urban centers, uh, the less you have access to high speed internet, right? So what that means is that then there's still an opportunity for community media to find a way of transmitting information to the respective uh, audiences or, or or customers. As it were, right. So, so while there may be an issue from a a news twenty four point of view, uh, if you look at their their typical consumer is an, a consumer in the urban and the peri urban. But when you look at community media, uh, look at Limpopo, for instance, is one of the the highly uh, uh, rural the rural province. Eastern Cape, I think, is the is the most rural province, followed by Limpopo, then followed by uh, possibly. Uh, Northern Cape and then the Northwest, so and and, and then Bumalang. So if you look at these five provinces, the, the 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 opportunity is there for print to continue surviving, right? But of course, the biggest thing, the biggest challenge with print is that we know that the cost of producing a an edition is a lot more. So so if if uh, printing mills, for instance, uh, decide to increase the cost, it means the input of Printing uh, uh, an edition becomes a lot more. So, so the, the the challenge really then is going to be there to say how do you one maintain the ability to put out the information 
and still manage to uh, sustain yourself as a as a news house. And I want to talk to an opportunity that I again, uh, uh, at least in my observation, of uh, feel that community media may have missed, uh, particularly around COVID uh, issues, but may have uh, uh, had their opportunity to take to take advantage of. So look at the Solidarity Fund, right? Solidarity Fund have decided that they are going to, as part of the many things that they are funding, they are also having their own, uh, uh, what is, they are having a media campaign that they are running. The community newspapers and print uh, publications should be one of the beneficiaries there. And to Sepang's point, perhaps the biggest thing is, is the industry, is NCR, so, sorry, the, 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 uh, the, the leadership of the community media, particularly print, approaching a solidarity fund and say, by the way, we want some of that ad spend to come to to be placed on, on our on our community papers so that we are able to, to be sustainable. But the other area, Ananias, has been uh, th there's been a rise of civil society movements that are supported by uh, international agencies, whether it's the UNF, uh, UNFP, whether it's the uh, you, you know uh, or, or mainly the UN agencies. They've spent a little bit around the COVID communications, right? And in most of them, they've then spoken or at least emphasized in the campaigns that the communication must be geared at citizens across the spectrum, from urban to those who are in the rural areas. And the community media could then have been at least been sitting pretty in terms of saying, if we are sitting at, or at least from our point of view, we should be able to go to go to an uh, one of the or, or the many UN agencies that are advertising themselves, or not really advertising, but that are spending money on COVID communications to say, we want some of that ad spend to come here so that we can then cover our cost of producing uh, the paper, our cost of distributing the paper, and our cost of running the newsrooms and making sure that we have the kind of credible content that is useful to our consumers. Okay, thanks a lot, uh, Lorato. That was helpful. Let me talk to you and I'll give you minutes just to express what we are we don't need that this time. We are facing a crisis as community media. We need solutions. If you are a, a participant now, you want to take part to say something, I'll give you this opportunity. Going once. Going twice. What was oh, the question? God. Sorry, just missed that. Okay. I can I say something? I didn't get that. Uh, can you repeat that, uh, Ananias? Nick, okay, I was saying to not the speakers, but to the party, to the participants. Uh, anyone who wants to say something, I'll allow them to speak just for two minutes. Participants, and so that the speakers can wrap up. Octavia, I can yes. hear you. You want to, you want to say something, Octavia? Go ahead. Yes. Uh, thank you very much. I'm here in Gauteng, and I'd like to thank everybody on the panel. All what we are saying as a community media, I'm into print, and SMDDA did really help us a lot. Mamzuki says sometimes we call her at our odd times, you know, saying what can we do, and being that a smaller yana publication here in Enadale. I mean, I'm with big guns around me and I'm trying, we are pushing. All what we are saying, as we can come together, as we are getting this platform, you know, sharing the ideas on how we can come together and say, you know what, not really we need all those handouts, but what we need is to say, if only you can get the ads. 
our normal uh, advertisers are not advertising with us right now, even though when you go, they'll say if only for, for, for your rate, they'll want you to cut into three or four, you know, and then real MDDA has come through for us and mostly to thank you to say, you know what, if only we can, as Lorato had said that we need to come together and say, this is what we're going to do. I'm in Gauteng Co-op and as you're in Gauteng Co-op, we're really trying to knock on those doors of saying, how can you help us? We are saying, here are our publications. We want that help. You know, include, and again, what Nick had said about the GCIS. Yes, even with the GCIS, you know, I have sent them tons and tons of emails of saying, listen, this is what we want. During the COVID-19, this is what we want. All that we are asking, we're asking for those ads, even though it can be a paid content, you know, an advertorial whereby they can pay us for that advertorial is so much more better than anything else. You know, our print has gone up, you know, whereby you need to pay more for printing. You know, in April, the prices have gone up and you have the stuff that is there on the ground. This is all what we are saying. We are thanking you, Mam Zuki, Swa, and now Bab Ananias and Lobo. We are thanking you very much uh, with Lorado and with Christopher. We are thanking you and we are saying, please, if only we can put the community media up front, they must see now that we, do. we are trying. We are working with nothing next to nothing, but we are trying to put the news out there. Thank you very much. Okay, no, thanks, thanks, thanks a lot. I hope you can hear me. Yeah. Let me ask my colleague Nyakando uh, to go to questions right away so that we get more participants. Nyakando, go on with questions. Okay. Um, Okay, uh, let me quickly address that question. Um, and I think Usizuki can also uh, add, in, or add on to that because it also talks to the issue of funding and what, what, you know what I mean? So um, I think what is most important for communities, what they need to understand is that they must hold the, the board accountable because we, they established board of directors from the same community. So the board of directors represent communities at a community radio station. So those are the people that must be held accountable for everything. So if they hold them accountable, there is no way uh, somebody can claim a community radio station to be a personal business. There is no way because the community will be holding them accountable. They, want, they, will, they will want to know what are the financial statements saying? How much money are we making? How much money is being, is being used for training and development of your staff? How much money is being plowed back into the community itself? Supporting Ukokos Banbani, the NGO there that, is, that, is, that doesn't have food. You know, those are the things that the community broadcasters must do. They generate money, they plow it back into the community. So they, it can be a personal business. So the communities must, must take responsibility themselves and make sure that they hold the board accountable for the station management at that is the most important thing. That's why at the end, last year, you remember, you, we saw a number of community broadcasters being closed down. And people were blaming Casa for closing them down. But, not that, but actually, they, they must be blaming their board of directors for not taking responsibility and making sure that they apply for the renewal of the license. They have entrusted them with that responsibility. And when... Okay. Th th thank you. Thank you, Masaka, for... Those are the things that, that, that we need to dig into. 
thanks a lot. Colleagues, we are only left with uh, 12 minutes to wrap up. I'll go back to the speakers again, just to give us their final final word and the way forward. Just in a, in a minute, Nick, how, how, how do you see us going forward from here? In a minute. Uh, look, I want to clear something. Community radio stations are viable. Uh, we are viable, we are surviving under extreme conditions, uh, but I just want people, advertising agencies, to start actually to, you know, to dump that thing that community radio stations are not doing well. We are doing fine, but we are doing fine under extreme conditions. But we do need business, we do need to build, you know, relationship with companies and so that we can serve our community. I agree, Pasaka have mentioned it very clear. You know, you, you know the regulation is there and it's clear. So all I'm saying is that the uh, community station needs support as well. So we must not be seen as beggars. It's true, we are viable. Uh, I'll give you an example with Madibeng FM. We've started Madibeng FM. We haven't even received even funding, not even one funding, but that money is being actually collected from the community and today we survived even COVID. We haven't even applied yet for funding or relief fund. But all we're saying is that because we our business plan, it, it's working in a way that we've managed to cover uh, to survive under COVID as well. But definitely, all I'm saying in simple, let's have a hope on community radio station, uh, community media. Uh, we can survive. We are just as businesses as other com uh, other businesses, but we are owned by the community. Thank you. From the MDDA, if I can quickly come in, uh, I would just like to say in conclusion that uh, in the short term, the MDDA will still be dispersing the normal grants, but we're looking at, with the board, we're looking at the uh, impact of COVID even in the next financial year. So we're trying to find strategies on how we can further support the, the sector, apart from normal grants, in terms of the impact uh, on the COVID. In the short term, I've announced that we're having a sustain, consultative conference on sustainability. So all these issues that we're talking about today, including there's, there's going to be a commission on consolidating government, uh, government support. So all we're trying to pull all resources together. So that will happen. And the, the aim of that conference is a terms of reference for a sustainability model that we think over time, I think, in fact, in the next two years, we will then unveil just so that we build on the on the issues that we have, we build on the strengths we have, and we bridge the, 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 the gaps that we think or weaknesses that we think the sector has. Thank you. Thank you, Suzuki. So, and I must just appeal to our uh, speakers, please leave your thoughts on the chat room, so the participants can leave contacts on the chat room so that they can access them. And Lula, you mean that? My, my party short, uh, Ananias, is that one, uh, as a collective, you must demand accountability from GCIS with regards to the reporting of the set aside of spending 30% uh, on community media, right? Because it's always easier to make these statements, but then the money is not spent. So we, we, must, we must see that happening. Uh, secondly, from a, a very practical side, and, and, and I take Paseka's point, uh, not Paseka, uh, uh, a point around uh, the, the issue of, you know, don't, don't wait for Jobek-based organizations and all of that. But the reality is, if you look at uh, the Wesizo Platinum Mine, for instance, it may be in, in, in Liedach, in, in, in Rustenberg, but uh, its head office is in, is in Melrose Arch, right? So when they appoint an, an advertising agency and a media buying agency, they are likely to, have, to appoint one that is based in Johannesburg. So practically what, you, what the community media practitioners should do is that uh, always uh, watch this community because agencies, like myself as well, when we win accounts, we, are, we announce on this community to say, I've won account X, Y, or Z. And if, for instance, the Wesizo Planina Mine is in your area and you know that they will need to talk to the people in Liedach, as an example, then you, 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 uh, you approach Dico directly and say, Mirana, we see that you've won the account uh, of Wesizo. We run a community uh, a newspaper in Liedach. We run a community radio station that covers your, your area of the people that you're going to be talking to. So 
we want to be your point people in terms of you placing content, uh, not only just advert, but we want advertorials. We can actually help you even work on uh, 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 translation services because th that's another value add that could be there. That you find that an advertising agency in Johannesburg, they are a white owned agency or they are a Zulu speaking agency and they don't have Setswana uh, kind of uh, 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 services, right? So you are able to uh, offer that as value add. So, so that would be my, my, my last contribution, Ananias. And thank you so much once again for the opportunity and to all the panelists. Um, thanks, uh, Ananias. And let me also thank my appreciation to all the community media in the Northwest uh, who have been spreading our gospel as the, as the chapter. My part is short is that um, I want to emphasize the, the power in approaching business as one. You know, uh, in, in union language, they call it bargaining uh, power. So, so in as much as I agree with Nerat, I think if community media in, in the Northwest we can come together and have one company, that can represent all of them. So that company will then be able to look out for opportunities wherever they are and, and bring the money to them. Instead of in, um, trying to find opportunities or advertising opportunities all over the show. I mean, considering the kind of um, limited resources that they have. So that that will be my part in short. I want to emphasize that they have to come together to to make sure that we benefit. Because for as long as they don't speak with one voice, they will not. Uh, th thanks, thanks a lot, Dr. Pang. Uh, Mr. Maleka, the last bite. Yeah, thank you so much, Ananias. Thank you for inviting us. Um, thank you for sharing the information with our with our colleagues and the people in the, in the Northwest. What is important for us is that please compliance is key. Let us comply as community broadcasters um, in general. It's, it's very important. Otherwise, you, you will be there forever if, if you comply. Lastly, ICASA has issued, I've just mentioned that ICASA has issued an invitation to apply for, a, for digital community television services. This notice was issued in March, at the closing date is the 4th of November. So um, everyone in the Northwest take advantage. There's three licenses for the Northwest, if I'm, I think so. There's three licenses in the Northwest. So you can apply for it, put together your, your document, submit a pre-registration application, and make sure that you uh, <laughs> that is it from myself, and thank you so much for, for, for Okay, okay, thank you. Thank you so much, unfortunately, one speaker couldn't be with us, uh, but she sent an apology and she was participating as a mute. But I ask the guys, thanks a lot for having this opportunity. And as well, we really appreciate your time. We really appreciate your efforts, your inputs, and everything. We together we built this industry. We're struggling a lot. Like one way, the thing, Paseca, Dorato, and uh, Sabang said, you have one common goal, you just have one company that can represent you guys and outsource some funds. We need, we need, we need funding here. So we need some money. We don't like running a, a charity organizations here. But as long as we are not united, as long as we always ask as competitors, we always have a problem. But I'm really humble and honored to be part of this initiative and we're hoping to get more speakers as time goes by, get more people, let us develop the sector, let us work together and stop pointing figures, stop accusing each other, but have people to uh, one thing must be very in South Africa, people don't uh, take responsibility. Uh, take responsibility.
Gorato mentioned something about the 30%. We know in our conferences, seminars, everywhere, there is community media. This issue is raised time and again, but no one is taking full responsibility to make sure that GCI, GCIS adhere to the promise of 30% advertising to community media. But I know most of the as uh, said, they are trying by all means to engage such stakeholders to, to participate and express that 30% to community media. I'm very happy and thanks a lot for participating, guys. Uh, we, we've been live, and if you need to watch this thing again, you can go to www.westnewsonline.com. Northwestnewsonline.com. Then you can watch everything. The link is there. You can watch it on the website. Or download new apps. A new like a new a new like a new device a new in train new. Thank you.